Hey, hey, everybody, it's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update from Japan. When I prepared for this video, I couldn't believe the amount of different places around the world that were talking about the hashtag relist XRP. Yeah, that was really a phenomenon that gathered steam on Monday and Tuesday on Twitter. And it all was the surprise bombshells that came in favor of the digital asset XRP from the magistrate judge citing it had currency value and it had utility. And then we had the SEC on record say that trading XRP on the secondary market is not illegal. So there is much anticipation that there'll be relisting of XRP on those exchanges that suspended trading. Uh, it's really fascinating to see the power of sentiment on social media. Even Mr. Kital, the CEO of SBI, who is the largest outside shareholder of Ripple and on their board, he retweeted this Coin Telegraph article that was written in Japanese. And yeah, we are just continuing to see his support. SBI has never, ever moved to a position of neutral. In fact, the announcement of ODL, which is on-demand liquidity, in using the digital asset XRP as a bridge currency was announced from Japan even after the suit was filed. Well, today, unfortunately, it did fall out of the top 40. The number one hashtag was about George Segal, who passed away a legend in film. Many of his movies are real classics. Now let's take a look at the market because it's a mixed bag, but there are still a lot of projects that are hanging on to some very good double digit gains with a performance in the last seven days. That's what we're looking at. We're looking at also by volume. You can see that XRP in the last seven days is up 18%, VeChain up 17%. Oh, there's just so many. Theta coin up 106%. Filecoin up 31%. Uh, Zilliqa, Pundix, Tron, Bitcoin SV, Hex, Kusama, uh, Iota. <laughs> there's Tezos, Quant, Dent, Hydro. Yeah, everybody's hanging on to their gains over the last seven days, despite BTC taking a break. Now, I think. We are just getting to take a small breath, and I suspect we're going to see another nice push upwards. Next, I want to really just give a commentary about the seriousness of effort to draw profit out of mining. So don't be fooled. It's not just always about solving these complex puzzles to capture a block. It also is the other ancillary businesses that surround the mining that benefit from those efforts. And I'm talking about IPOs, custody, trade, just to name a few. And today the Digital Currency Group announced that they are going to take 14,400 miners, combine it with HUT-8, and they're going to enable a huge pool in the United States that will become an alternative to the Chinese pools. It's very good. And you saw that SBI also is doing the same with the start of its pool. Now, don't get on the negative side with the energy use because this is all about the positives where we are seeing some balance and some movement away from the concentration of of Bitcoin mining within just one country and of just a very limited amount of people doing it. So this is very, very good for everyone in this space because we need to have something that is more healthy in terms of balance. And I am really, truly a believer that we are going to solve that energy problem with the modern technology, especially when it comes to using renewable energy. So one by one, until that is done, these uh, these people are going to move away from the Chinese mining pools. And Barry Silbert thinks they're going to go to the Foundry USA pool in his tweet that he sent out. But anyway, it, this is all really good news for anybody who's in this space. And if you talk about the formation of new ETFs for Bitcoin, yes, Pockets will be lined with 
this new sky bridge should it be able to be listed with its shares on the New York Stock Exchange. Now, even the law firm Simpson, Thatcher, and Bartlett, which paid Mr. Hinman $15 million while he was serving as the director of the SEC and famously giving that pass to Bitcoin and Ethereum from being regulated as a security, they are going to serve as counsel to the sub advisor. So I know there's a lot of talk about the conflict of interest that we've seen with this particular firm, but mm, I think we have to look at all sides and consider this that Jesse Hines, the attorney, put out because yeah, I know it was not a good look, right? The past in terms of the amount of money that Mr. Hinman was paid and the business and interests that the firm was representing. I know it looks horrible, but also too, he has a point here and I wanna just bring it up because I don't think we can ignore it. Does it matter to you that the incoming chairman, and he's talking about Gensler, is likely getting a pension from MIT, who receives funding from Ripple? Or is that just totally different? So Jesse, yeah, I wanna thank you for always giving us pause to look at both sides of the coin. The conflict of interest, however, I think you'd have a hard time getting me to change my mind when it comes to this law firm Simpson, Thatcher and Bartlett with its huge contributions that it's given to the politics in the United States. This is, yeah, not good because Congress is the body that ultimately sets the rules for the scope of regulation. And when you see the amount of donations, contributions to the parties that have occurred over the years, it's just really insane. <laughs> so Simpson, Thatcher and Bartlett in 2020 gave $1 million to Democrats and then they gave 60,000 to the Republicans. I think this is a horrible, conflict of interest. We shouldn't be able to buy politicians. On a positive note, the Ripple monster partner, Novati, they are what seems to be executing their plans to expand in Southeast Asia. And they had this position open for the head of cross-border payments, but it looks like they have filled that position because they are no longer accepting the applications and it coincides with the flash fx partner of ripple they are an on-demand liquidity partner so they use the digital asset xrp and they tweeted out on march 11th that they have a new odl corridor coming and in the last 24 hours we've learned that they are seeking help from you and from me and from their customers and from their partners so that they can be expanding and meeting the new demands and needs of the increased business. In fact, they have reached 900% transaction growth in the last 12 months. Can you believe that? So they are doing a crowdfunding endeavor and this is going to really shape their business in the future. And you can participate in as little as $250. And they're not raising capital because they are not doing well. No, 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 not at all. They are doing well. It is to scale up the business and to scale up, well, it takes capital. So if you're 18 years or older and you are a retail investor, you have an opportunity to participate. And it looks like, uh, depending on how they structure this, which we're gonna get the details soon, you can register and they will notify you. Um, it could be in an IPO, it could be in a buyback, it could be in dividends, I'm not sure. This site, Equities, is um, you know allowing that fundraise to be structured in different ways. And we're gonna see the deal uh details soon 
on equities. This, this is a very, very interesting site. The founders, I, I love the business model of crowdfunding and the founders of this one in, uh, Australia, they met each other when they were students at the University of Sydney. Hmm. Very nice. And you can see too, when you look at the details of what they're doing, you can, you can really see that there's a, a lot of reference to on-demand liquidity here. We access the RippleNet and the on-demand liquidity solution from Ripple and F, uh, Flash FX is connected to 350 plus financial institutions worldwide offering a payment gateway in and out of Australia coupled with a unique local banking solution and infrastructure, offering an efficient and where possible real-time collection and distribution method. And then it says right up here that, um, where does it, mentions um, ODL again up here where it says that at its core, FlashFX leverages a variety of digital payment technologies, both domestically and internationally. One example is Ripple's on-demand liquidity blockchain solution, which utilizes Ripple's digital asset XRP to improve and speed up the payment flow. So anyway, I'm, I'm very interested. I did register my interest and I want to see how that deal is structured and take a look at what the return in, uh, on investment actually is. Okay, everybody, we are jumping to the fluff and I found something very cool. It is a video that takes you all around Japan and shows you the blossoms of 2021. We're halfway through cherry blossom season now in Tokyo. And uh, this is just a really great view. It's from a drone. So you are getting a bird's eye view. It's very nice. And the cherry blossoms, yeah, are all about reflecting on life, death, and renewal with, gosh, records of this ritual dating back here to the 700s. So I think when you really take the full meaning, full meaning of cherry blossom, it is about the new and bright promising year that is going to come with spring on its arrival. So enjoy these views. It's really a great video. I'll put a link to it in the description below. And until then, do take care. Sayonara for now. Bye-bye.